So, you want to become an animator. Animation to me is the most perfect medium in the world. If you have imagination, if you're someone that loves creating stories, if you love creating characters, if you love looking at storylines, then this is the perfect medium to create your work. Just because there are a bunch of mere pencil drawings going through these routines and giving these performances, uh, to me, that was real. So today I'm gonna to talk about animation. And I'm gonna go from the very beginning. I'm gonna go as if you're a complete beginner. A lot of people ask me, what is the best animation software to use? For 3D animation, the best software to use is a program called Maya. And this is developed by Autodesk. Now Maya is a 3D animation software. And it's been around for many, many years. And this is what's used in the industry. This is the standard. So if you join any animation company, they are likely to be using Maya or their own version of Maya that they've developed over the years. The good thing is, if you're a student, this is free. You can download a free software of it and you get it for three years. Um, so you have to create an account, you sign in, and you sign in with your student email. So if you're at school, if you're at college, if you're at university, you would use that email that has your university or your school's email on. And then you get it for free, for three years. So you get a student uh, software version of it. Um, if you're not a student, you can get a free trial of it um, to, to get you going, to get you started. Now today we're gonna to be looking at the first thing that is taught in animation schools, which is the famous ball bounce. So there's a number of reasons we do the ball bouncing technique. The main reason is we learn arcs and we learn squash and stretch. So as a ball bounces, a ball will stay in this circular shape and as it falls, it's gonna stretch out. So it's gonna stretch out to this position, okay? Because as the speed goes down, as the speed increases, uh, the ball stretches out. And when it lands, it's then gonna squash down. It's gonna squash down as it hits the floor, as it hits that and it gets the momentum and it squashes because it makes contact with the ground. And then it's gonna bounce back up, it's gonna spring back to life and come back up and then it's gonna come down again and squash at the bottom before it springs back up again. And each time it bounces, it's gonna lose a little bit of momentum. It's gonna lose a little bit of that power. So it's gonna decrease the height every single time. Um, so this is what we're gonna be using to begin with. And I'm gonna leave a copy of this in the comments below so you can download it too and have this ball bounce. This is what Maya will look like when you first open it. Now when you first open Maya, it can be a bit overwhelming because there are so many different buttons. And not only are there so many different buttons, there are so many different uh, categories of buttons that just go on forever and forever and forever. But don't worry, because you do not need to know what all of these buttons do, okay? I don't know what all of these buttons do. I don't know if anyone knows <laughs> what all of these buttons do, so have no fear. When you first open it, you will see this grid on the floor. Now, Maya is just infinite space. It just goes on for infinity. It goes on and on and on, so I could just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and it would just keep going forever. So the reason they have a grid is this grid, this middle point here is the middle of all of this just infinity, just infinity space. So this is the middle point. So when you import characters that you want to, to use to animate, they will usually import in this middle section here. So you know where you stand. Now, uh, you can turn the grid off if you want, but it's a good idea to keep it on. Now in the middle of the grid, you have this compass here, which has Y going up and it has X and it has Z. Now these are different directions that you need to know about. Um, so Y obviously goes up and Z and X go in these two directions here. If you wanna know how I'm rotating, I'm holding down command and then left click and I can spin the camera around like so. If I want to scroll, from left to right, then I will hold down Alt, I will hold down Middle Mouse, and I can move from left to right. Okay, and those were the two main ones you need to know. If I want to zoom in, I can use the Middle Mouse to zoom in and out. In Maya, there's a number of ways you can do things. Uh, so I'm gonna go through some of the options. So you could go Create, Polygon Primitives, and Sphere. Click on that 
and you'll get a spear. And you spear. And you'll get a spear in the middle of the map. I'm gonna undo that by doing Command Z. The other way you could do it is you could change this to modeling. This drop down here, you could change it to modeling. And when you change it to modeling, uh, you then get new different options. I'm gonna select poly modeling and I'm gonna press sphere. And that will do exactly the same process and that will create a sphere. So I've got now I've got a sphere in the middle of my map. So now we're gonna create a save folder for Maya. Now Maya likes to keep things organized. So we're gonna to go to file. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create project window. Now what this does is it's gonna create a new folder. And within this folder, there's gonna be multiple different folders. So we're gonna have a folder for our scenes, for assets, for images, for source images, for sounds, for movies. So anything that we want to store, anything that we want to bring into the scene, we can store it in these different folders and that'll become relevant later. Um, so we've got already got all these file folders that Maya is gonna create for us. So if there are any, any images, which we're gonna do in a moment to import, it can find them. So we're gonna click new and you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this uh, bouncing ball and click accept. Okay, and that will create a, a folder for us. Now, if it's the first time opening Maya and we wanna get back to that, then what we need to do is click set project. So we click set project and out of the all the projects you have, you would click on the one you've got, so bouncing ball and set. Okay, so now it knows that it's working within that folder. And if we want to import anything, if we want to get anything, we get it from that folder. So now I'm going to go through some of the movement tools. If it's not selected, we can either draw a box around the sphere to select the sphere, or we can just click on the sphere itself to select it. And we have these buttons by the side. So if we select it, we can click this button here. Okay. And this means we can move the sphere. So we can pull on the Y and we can move it up. We can pull on the X and we can move it in the X direction or we can pull on the Z and move it in the Z direction. So we can move it around this space, move it around this infinity of space. Okay. Another thing we could do if we don't want to just pull this, we can select the Y and with our right mouse drag, so I could be right over here with the right mouse drag, we can pull it up and down. So I don't even need to be hovering on it as long as I select it. So if I select this one, if I select the X, I can move it from left to right, like so. The second tool we need to know about is the rotate tool. Okay, and so this does what it says on the tin. You can rotate it this way. You can rotate it that way. And what I'm doing now, just to get it back to where it is beginning, I'm pressing Z to undo. Here, in these boxes here, we have all of the actual maths that Maya is doing behind the scenes. So we have the actual data of what we're telling it to do. Because back in the day when 3D animation first started, it was just data, it was just calculations. And people would type in calculations and hope that the ball would do what they worked out in their head. Luckily, as artists now, we don't have to do the calculations, we don't have to do the maths because Maya will do it for us. But, so for example, I want this back on the ground. Okay, I don't, I don't want it here anymore, I want it back on the ground. I can go to translate Y, because I know that's making up and down. You can see, I can see here, that it's changing. The, the, the number is changing. Okay, if I decide I want it back on the ground, I can go to this and just type zero, and it will go back on the ground for me. So it's a really cool way to zero things out. If you change your mind and you want to go back to the beginning, I can just select all of these and go back to zero. And now it's right in the middle of my grid again. Now I'm going to import an image that I'm going to use as my reference. And this is done all the time in animation. All the time animators use reference uh, to help you, to guide you to animate. You're going to find your thumbnail. Okay, I I'm going to provide this thumbnail. You can get it in the comments below. So you're going to select this wherever you've saved it and you're going to put it in to your bouncing ball folder, your bouncing ball folder here. And you can put it wherever you want. 
uh, just put it somewhere you know you're going to find it. I'm going to put it in images. So I know that when I come into Maya, that I'm going to look in my images and that's where I'm going to find it. So going back to Maya, I'm going to go to create free image plane. And that is going to create this image plane here that I can put any image onto that I can use as my reference. Now there's a couple boxes up here in this corner, in the top right corner. Okay, this, as we've just discussed, is the channel editor, which is going to say the data. It's going to say where where in Maya is the object. So I can say at the moment it's just on zero because I've left it where it is. But I can click on attribute editor, this symbol here. And this is going to bring up another lot of data. Now I want to add a folder to this. I'm going to click this folder icon here. And I'm going to go into my images. Now Maya is clever. It already knows that I'm working in this current project. It knows that I'm working in Bouncing Ball. So it's going to bring up this fol these folders by the side. And I've clicked on images and it's just where I've saved it. So the Bouncing Ball is there. So I'm going to click open and that's going to bring up my image. Now as you can see, for some reason, it's, um, it's brought backwards. I'm going to click on my image. I'm going to click on the rotate tool, this one here, like I did earlier, and I'm just going to spin it around so that it's clear. The other tool that I didn't show you earlier was this tool here. Okay, so by clicking this, I can increase the size and make this bigger so that I can see what I'm doing. And same as before, I can go to this and pull it back. You can see that isn't quite exactly um, straight on the rotate. So what I can do is I can go to the rotate. And if I just do minus 180, there we go. That, that is now straight. So now we get to do the fun part. Now we get to do the animation. And we're going to animate the bouncing ball. Now, firstly, I'm just going to delete this object because we're not going to use that. We're going to use a rig and we're going to import our own rig. Now, Rigs are what we use in animation, that's what we use to animate the characters and we import them. So, I've left one in the comments that you can download and I've put it into my assets folder so I know where it is when it comes to finding it. But you can put it wherever you want, as long as it's in your Maya folder uh, you're, and as long as you know where it is, then you'll be able to find it. So I'm going to go File, I'm going to go to Create Reference, I'm going to click on Create Reference. And then I'm going to go to my assets folder here. Because remember, Maya's really clever. It knows we're working in Bouncing Ball. It knows that it's got these folders to work with. So I'm going to click on assets. And I've put two balls in here. And the one I'm going to use, the one I'm going to leave in the comments is the Ultimate Ball version 1. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click reference. And it's going to bring that into my scene. Uh, this is a really cool, cool ball. And it's got a couple of controls on it. So it has this middle control and this middle control is called the root control. Now this is what uh, we're going to be using to animate. So if I press W uh, to, to get the translate tools up, I can bring it up and down. Uh, I could rotate it. I'm just going to press Z to undo that because I don't really want it to do that. And the top um, control it's called ball top, ultimate ball top, is where we can add some squash and stretch. Okay, so as you can see from my reference, we're going to be using that later on to get some squash and stretch uh, when it hits the floor. So it looks like a bouncing ball. I'm just going to undo that to set it all back to zero. Now, I'm actually going to uh, ignore this reference for a little bit. I'm going to ignore this reference for a little bit because I'm going to use my own time ins. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder down here in my layers. Now, if you've used Photoshop uh, before, then layers work a lot like uh, uh, this in Photoshop. So I'm going to press this symbol here with the circle to create a new layer. And it's called layer one. Let's just name it reference so I know what, it's, what it is, what it's referring to. So reference, save. And then it has an option here where I could put it on R. Now what that means is it means that I'm not going to be able to select it now, which is really good if I'm animating this character here 
uh, and I'm trying to select curves, but all I do keep doing is keep selecting this reference. Well, we don't want that. I don't need to animate the reference. It's just going to stay in that position. So that it's really good to leave it on R, so it's out of the way. And then if I do decide I want to move again, I can just unclick it and then move it about. But I'm going to put it to R. Um, I also, <coughs> sorry, also, as I just said, I'm not actually going to be using it for the timing, so I'm going to make it disappear. So I'm going to click this V, which stands for uh, visual, and I'm just going to make it disappear because I don't really need it right now. So I'm just going to work with this ball. Um, so um, on frame one, we're going to have this ball in the air. The other thing I'm going to quickly mention is the ball also has this control at the bottom. Oh, and this is actually called the root. So they refer to this one as the root. Um, but we're not actually going to be using this for the animation. This is just to place your, your ball in the scene. If we start animating that one and the middle one, then Maya is going to be fighting with itself to know where it, wh when it should move. If it's got one control saying we should go up, one control saying we should go down, it's going to be fighting with each other. So we want to make sure we're only animating one. So we're not going to animate this bottom one. Um, we can, in these options here, in our channel editor, we could change it. We could change the ball to something else. So I could change it to a football. I could change it to a volleyball. I could change it to a tennis ball. And obviously, all these balls bounce a little bit different to each other. And there's a beach ball. So you need to think about that. Um, when you're bouncing it. I'm just going to leave it on simple for the moment because I'm just going to worry about the ball bouncing and once we've got a regular ball bounce we can then come in and then play around with it and uh, think about well how does a, bouncing, how does a, a bouncy ball bounce compare to a bowling ball? Well a bowling ball isn't going to have much bounce but that's all um, for an advanced lesson in the future. For now we're just going to bounce a ball. So I'm going to grab this middle control here and I know that I, I want it to start in the air. So I'm going to bring it up using this control here. I'm going to use this control to bring it up on the Y. And as you can see, our Y control is changing. And I want it about, I'm going to say about, let's have it about 10, roughly. Now obviously, it's your anim animation. It's up to you. I'm going to say about 10. But it's completely up to you. So I'm going to have it roughly about 10. And I'm going to press S on my keyboard to set that. And what that's going to do, that's going to tell Maya that I want you to remember on frame one, this is where I want the ball to be. I'm happy with the, where the ball is. I want you to remember that on frame one, the ball is going to be in this position. And as you can see, all of these um, data in my channel editor has gone red so it knows that there's a frame on that it's going to remember that it's going to be at roughly uh, 10 on my translate y and then i'm going to come to about frame 10 and i'm going to put it on the floor um, now we could uh, like zoom in and have a look and place it roughly on the grid and, and spend a lot of time matching it up but the clever thing about this rig is if I go to my box here and I click zero, it knows that it wants to be at the bottom of the grid. So that's a really clever thing about this rig. So I don't have to mess around, it goes straight to the rig. So I've done that by just pressing zero here. Now, also remember to press S here to save that. Now I'm gonna teach you a cool control. I've already got it turned on, but I'm gonna teach you a cool control. Um, so the reason mine already turned red before I'd even press S is because I've got this button called Auto Key. Um, and it's this plus with a circle around it. It's got circular arrows around it. And what that means is if there's already a key somewhere in this timeline and we decide we want to put a key somewhere else, then Maya is going to remember that. And Maya is going to remember that piece of data. So rather than pressing S every time we want to save um, a bit of data, it's going to save it for us. So it's a really clever way, it's a time consuming way for Maya to remember what we're doing rather than having to press S every time. Because you might find that you go in, you animate and sync, you animate it, it's perfect, you've got the perfect pose on a character, but then you forget to press S and you've lost all of that work. And that's really unfortunate. So if you have auto key on, it's just gonna remember every time you move sync in Maya. So uh, 
when we now need it bouncing back up don't we and i'm gonna go to frame 16 and i'm gonna raise it up now it's not going to be raised as much as before because balls lose velocity as they go along it's, it's going to lose the energy that, with each bounce so it's not going to jump as high as before as the as the first bounce so i'm going to bring it to roughly i'm going to say about six so i'm going to raise it to about there on frame 16. Now, one thing I've noticed, uh, the ball takes the same amount of time, so the same, same amount of frames to go up as it takes to come down. So, if we count six along to frame 22, that's when we know it's going to be coming back down again. So, that's when we know it's going to hit the floor again. So, uh, once again, uh, I could drag it down back to the grid, but I could also just type in zero and translate why and it's going to come down. So, now we've got a bounce and it comes back up again. Bam, 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 bam. So, uh, I'm now just going to keep going through that process um, where it's bouncing and coming back down, but it's not bouncing as high as it was in the first frame. Uh, and I'm just going to work through that now. Um, it might be a bit um, time consuming, but hopefully it shouldn't take too long. So, I'm going to go to about frame 26 and I'm going to bring that up to roughly uh, about four, I would say. Obviously, you don't have to use these exact, um, you know, the exact number that I've got there. You could change your mind. Um, but it might be best to follow for now and then in the, in, the, in the future, change it. So, from 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 26. Um, so, I'm going to count three, uh, four frames on to frame 30. And I know that that's going to be 0. And I'm just going to keep going with that. So uh, I reckon around frame 33. And remember, we don't need to bring it out, up as much as before. So maybe, maybe three. And then because it took three frames from 30 to 33, we're going to count three frames on to get to 36. And once again, that's going to be at the bottom. So type in zero and I'll be back at the bottom. And then I think just maybe two frames on now, so maybe 38. Uh, bring it up a little bit more, maybe one, or maybe 1.5 1. looks good. And then at 40, bring it back down to zero. And let's see how this is looking so far. Okay, so so far, we've got this bouncing up and down. Let's have a few more. So now it's probably really trailing off now. So it's probably just having a few more bounces now as it's trickling off. So about, let's say just one more frame from here, 41. And you just want to come up a little bit. So maybe, maybe not even one, maybe zero, maybe 0 0.9. Let's just type that in, 0 0.9. Because we don't quite want it too high now. And then 42, back to zero. Once again, make sure you've got this plus and circle clicked. Because otherwise, each time you're putting it in, for me, it's saving it automatically. So it's lighting up red every time I change sync. If you haven't got that, then you're going to have to press S every time. So make sure you are doing that. Um, come to 43. And once again, even less than before. So maybe 0.5. roughly 0 0.5 and then 44 back on zero and then we want some really so now i'm just going to be don't going a frame apart because we just want really tiny bounces now um so 45 maybe i'm just going to type it in 0 0.3 46 back on zero And 47, not even 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.09. Let's just type that in. And then 48, we should probably do it back on zero. So let's have a look at how this is going so far. And if I want to look at just these frames, 
just these frames because I don't really I don't need anything here now on this timeline this is just empty space now what I can do is I can come into this box at the bottom on my timeline and I can type in 48 but let's let's give it a bit more let's let's say 54 just so there's time to register that space at the end and so now I can have a look back at my animation okay and that's not looking too bad but here's the thing at the moment, it doesn't look like a bouncy ball. It doesn't really look anything like a bouncy ball. All it looks like is a circle going up and down. Okay, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna go in now and fix that and make it look more like a bouncy ball. So now we're gonna use a new tool. And this tool is called the Graph Editor. And this is the animator's best friend. I promise you, it's revolutionary when you find out about it. So, we're gonna change the way that Maya looks for this to work. So we're going to go to panels, we're going to go to layouts, free panes split top, that's the layout we're looking for, okay. Now mine's already up there, okay, but yours might not look like that, My, yours might look like something like this when you open up free panes split top. So that means we've got a view here, we've got a view here, and we've got a view here. Now often animators will use this um, as their camera shot. So whatever's shown on the camera will be here and whatever they're playing around with um, you know with the nerve curves will be here. So let's just change this to something else. Um, let's just change it to um, a left view. What's going on here? Here we go. So change that to left view. Keep this in perspective and here is where we're going to put the graph editor. So we're going to go to panels, panel. Then we're going to go to graph editor. And here we have our graph editor. If we select all of this by drawing a box around it and press F, it's going to zoom in for us. So this is all of our animation so far. This is all of the data that we've told Maya. Now back in the day, back in you know the original Toy Story, it all was just data. It was all just just this graph and you had to do the maths and tell the computer what you wanted it to do and then hope that your character was doing it by working out the maths. Luckily, now with Maya, we can do the creative side. We can go in as the artist and create stuff, but we still have the graph editor here to show us what we've told Maya to do. And so at the moment, it actually looks, you know, like we assume would a ball would go. It goes up, comes down, goes up, goes down. We can see the high points here. We can see the low points here. But at the moment, this doesn't look like a ball bouncing. And I'll tell you why. Because when we zoom in, so it's telling us from the graph here that it's going to start slow. It's going to speed up. And then it's going to slow down here before it hits the ground. It's gonna, as you can see from that curve there, it's going to slow down before it hits the ground. And then it's going to slowly come back up. Well, a ball doesn't work like that. A ball doesn't know it's going to hit the floor. The ball doesn't think, oh, hold on. I think I'm going to hit the floor here. So I better slow down because that's going to hurt. A ball, can't, can't, a ball can't think. So <laughs> so when the ball's coming to the floor, it's just going to keep coming down and, until it hits the floor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change the way that these curves work. And we're going to change what's called the tangent. So we're going to select these along the bottom. Um, so we're going to select these. And once we've selected them, they turn white because we've selected them. And we're going to click on this symbol here, which means linear. I'm going to click that. And so now it's linear. So it comes down, bounce, and then goes back up. And it comes down at one speed. We're going to zoom along to get these last couple. It doesn't really matter about the last two because it's going to be so fine. It's not going to matter too much. So now we've got the ball coming down, bam, it hits the floor and bounces back up. But it's, there's, there's one more thing we can do to make it look even better, to make it look even more like a ball bouncing. So I'm going to select this curve and I'm going to click uh, this symbol here to break the tangent. Then I've got to make sure that in my select, I've got a tick on in tangent and a tick on out tangent. Make sure they are ticked, so that means you can edit them. 
and I'm going to draw a box around this tangent so I can edit it. I'm going to press F to, to zoom in on it. Now, it's great that it's coming down the line, but we can make this look even better by pulling it up a little bit. So now the ball is going to hang in the air for a little bit before coming down, and then it hits with the, that speed. Okay, so that's going to make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to do the same here and pull that up a little bit so it hangs in the air before, come, before coming back down. And that's going to make it look a little bit more like a ball hanging in the air. And we're going to do that for all of our tangents down here. So same as before, we're going to select these bottom ones. We'll go to about there. And we're going to break all of those. So I'm going to click break tangents there. So I can now edit them. I'm going to come in one by one. I'm going to grab this handle here. And I'm going to pull it up a little bit so it hangs in the air before coming down. I'm going to select this one. So that hangs in the air for a little bit before coming back down. Select this one. Grab the handlebar. And sometimes they're a little bit tricky to, to grab. That's it. Pull it back up a bit. Pull that one. And then pull that up. If you want to zo zoom in, you can zoom zoom in by pressing F. Um, once you select the one you want. Uh, makes it a little bit easier sometimes to see it. So select, draw a box around it to select it. Pull it up. Draw a box around the out um, handle. Pull it up. And then keep going. So cir circle around the key. Circle around the tangent. And then pull it up. So we've got this lovely effect of the ball hanging in the air. And then I'm just going to probably do these last two. And there were two at the end we don't really need to do because they're so tiny, the, the bounces. So pull that up a little bit. Pull it up a bit. Oh, not that one. Make sure we don't select that one. Pull that up a little bit. And the same. Oh, the same with this one. There we go. So let's see how this is looking so far. Here we go. So it's got a bit more hangy. Now, if I want to look at just this um, this box here, I can press spacebar. If I just press the spacebar once on its own, it will then come into this frame. So I now see it bouncing. Okay, and it looks much nicer than it did, did before. I can press the spacebar again. And I could look at it on the left if I wanted to, but I can't really see much from there. And I can look at my graph editor. Now, I'm going to press S to come back to my perspective view. Now, there's one more thing we can do to make this look even better. Okay, so let's bring my reference back to have a look at it. And as you can see, when the ball hits the floor, bam, it should squash. It should squash up because the force of it hitting the floor is going to squash it into the ground before it springs back up. Okay, so in frame seven, you can see it's springing back up. It's springing right up. Um, so it's going to squash, then then stretch. And this is one of the principles of animation, squashing and stretching. And you can apply it to everything. It's not just ball bouncing. Um, our facial expressions will actually squash and stretch as we're going to the extremes. Um, our, our waists, our bodies might squash and stretch as we're running to give that that extra momentum. It's just a way in animation to really exaggerate our movement and make it look um, just more beautiful and more animated. So we're now going to add in that squash and stretch. So let's come to frame one. And we're now going to be using a different control. So far we've just been using this middle control and that's all we've animated, the middle control. But now I want to grab this top control and it's called Ultimate Ball Control Top. So I want to be animating that. I'm going to press S because I haven't um, got any keys on this control. I'm going to have to press S to get one to begin with. So I've pressed S. So now there's a, um, a keyframe on frame one and it's just going to be at zero because at the top it just needs to be zero. I'm going to turn the reference off because obviously they've used different timings to us and it might confuse us. So, about frame 10 was when it was on the floor. And so that's when we want it to be squashed. So let's squash it down. And let's squash it to about, not too, not too much, about minus 0.5. 
roughly, about minus 0.5. So it's got that good squashed effect as it hits the floor. Now, what Maya want, is going to do, Maya is going to try and work out the difference between 1 and 10, which is good for things like movement, because it's already done these frames for us. It's worked out that from 1 to 10, it needs to go from the top to the bottom, which is great. But for things like shape, um, it's already trying to change the shape of the ball. So it's already getting squashed by here, ready to be squashed by frame 10. Now, we don't want that because the ball's not going to squash until it hits the floor. So we're going to come in at frame 9. And we're going to stretch it because it's going to be this stretched motion as it's going through. And so let's um, stretch it in the opposite direction to about, about 0 0.5. Let's do the same, uh, let's do the opposite to what we did for the squash. So for the squash, we put minus 0 0.5. For the stretch, we're going to put roughly 0 0.5. And then frame 10, it squashes down. Now, frame 11, we then need it squashing back up. Okay, we don't want it squashed. We don't want it it's still squashed. It's now stretching back up because it's now bouncing back up. So now we're going to come in and it's not going to be as squashed. Um, sorry, it's not going to be as stretched as it was before. So before we had it as 0 0.5. So let's put this one to about 0 0.3. Roughly. So it's now going to squash and bang, stretch back up again. So it's now got a nice bouncy feel to it. It's looking nice. So, we're now going to go for that same process for all our other bounces. Now, a, a nice way to do that, if we look at our middle um, control, we can already see what all of our frames are, which is really helpful for us. But all of them frames we don't see when we're working on the top control because there's nothing keyed on them yet. Now, we could, right, so let's look at 16. That's up in the air, so it should be zero. So we could then select the top control and say, right, we want it to be zero here. And then we could go back to the middle to just to see what frames we've got. So next frame we've got is 22. And um, 22 is at the bottom, so it should be um, squashed. So let's put it to about, um, let's have a look. Squash it down. Maybe to 0 0.4 roughly. And then we need to do the frame before. So 21, it's going to be stretched to go into that position. So we've done 0 0.4. So let's just do regular 0 0.4, not minus 0 0.4. And then frame 22, we then, uh, frame 23 rather, we need it stretching back out again. And remember, it's not going to be as much as before. So let's go to maybe uh, 0 0.3. So we want to go and get another squash and stretch. Now we could repeat that same process, um, clicking every time on the middle button to see where our keys are. Or what we could do, so we know what keys we should have, we could go to 26, click on the top, and just press S to tell us, right, 26 is where we want our next key. Go to the middle, 30 is our next key. So let's click on the top control and press S on 30. And let's just keep doing that. So 33 is our next frame. So let's go to the top control and press S. 36 is our next frame. So let's go to the top and press S. So now we know where we should have keys and we can go in and edit that. 38 is where our next key should be. So let's go to the top control and press S. Go back to the middle. 40 is our next one. So let's go to the top control and press S. Back to the middle. 42 is our next one. So let's go to the top and press S. Then 43. Go to the top, press S. And I'll just keep doing that. 44. Save. Back to the middle. 45. And these are just our little bounces at the end now. Back to the top and S. And we probably don't even need to do them last ones because there won't be much squash and stretch because they're the, literally the last little bits. So we now know where we should have frames on the top one. So where did we get up to? So we've done 
a nice squash and stretch here, bam, and comes back up, and then bam, comes back up. And so 26, it should be at zero. So let's put that to zero as it comes up. So squashing, stretching, and zero at 26. Okay, so now next one is 30, and so that's where it's gonna be squashed. So let's come in and let's make this about minus 0.3. And then same as before, we need to go to the one frame before, at 29, and it should be stretched. So let's stretch that to about 0 0.2. Roughly, once again, you'd have to use these exact ones. And you can use what you want. And we're going to go to one frame after that, to 31, and stretch it back out again, about 0 0.2. Lovely. And then 33 will be when it's is back in the air. So let's put a zero on that. There we go. Then 36 is when it's gonna be squashed down again. So let's go about minus 0.2. Once again, frame before 35, we want it to be stretched. And so let's go to about 0.1. Yeah, that's looking good, about 0.1. And then 37, about 0.1 again. And then 38 is when it's at the top, so let's come in and say about zero. And this is when it's going to get fiddly now when we've got quite quite a lot of frames. Um, and at 40, looks like it's at the bottom again. So we're going to have to um, come down a tiny amount. So let's come to about minus, not too, not too much, minus... I think even less than one, so minus 0 0.4, I've got it on at the moment. Then 39 can be stretched out, but only a tiny bit. So maybe, yeah, 0 0.04. And 41, 0 0.0. Zero point zero four, and then at the end here, we just want very little bounces, don't we? So let's put that to zero, and put these all on zero. We just want the tiniest amount of um, squash and stretch here. So let's put all these last little frames on zero. Let's see how that's looking so far. There we go. So now that's looking like a bouncy ball, squashing and stretching as it's coming down. So it bounces, it stretches as it comes down. It's going to stretch, squash, and boink, bounces back up, comes to the top, and then it hangs in the top for a bit, which looks really nice. And then it's going to come back down, squash, Stretch up to the top and nice and slows down as it reaches the top. And then it comes down, bam, squash and up again. And that is looking quite nice so far. That's looking very nice so far. So there we go. Nice squash and stretch ball. Now the last thing we need to do at the moment, it's bouncing up and down, but we want it bouncing to the side. We want it bouncing um, from one position to another position. And so once again, we're gonna go back to our trusty graph editor by pressing the space bar to open up our three panels. And at the moment it's bouncing up and down. Now we've got lots of keys on translate Y because that's the up and down movement. I've clicked on the middle control just to let you know because um, that's the one we're gonna be using. And so we've got keys on the translate Y 
and we've got a key on the translate uh, Z and X but we don't really need them so we're going to move it in the X direction if we look at um, command Z if we look at our compass at the bottom X is going in that direction so we want it moving along the X so we're going to come just to our translate X we've got a key here we don't, we don't really need so we're going to press delete we're going to press the backspace to delete that and by frame 48 we want this now to be over here and let's have a look how that's looking so we're going to go from there to there and we're going to see if that's the right amount of distance and I would say roughly yeah maybe we could push it a little bit more and I can do that I can do that two ways I can either select that and I can either push it a little bit in here or I could actually manipulate the curve itself and I could bring it I could bring it back or I could bring it forward so I could manipulate it even with just the little curve here or I could push it forward and let's have a look I've probably said that's moving the right amount of distance um, but at the moment we've got kind of the same problems as earlier and it's not really behaving um, like it would and we can do that by coming in and changing the curve so it starts fast and then it will slow down over time it will slow down as it loses its momentum as it loses its velocity it's going to slow down over time until it reaches there and it might even slow down a bit quicker might slow down like so so it starts off fast and then we'll slow down over time so it moves a less less amount of distance so it's moving a lot of distance at the beginning and then it's moving less amount of distance at the end let's just have a look let's just play around with it and, and see how it looks And I think it needs to go go a bit more at the beginning, actually. So let's come back in. And a lot of animation is just this, playing around with the graph editor. And that's why I said the graph editor is the animator's best friend. Because this is where you really get to see the nitty gritty stuff. You really get to see um, how the animation works and how it's looking. There we go. and there we go that's my ball bounce there we go now there's loads more we could do to this there's loads more we can do to improve this but I'm going to leave that for the next tutorial I want this tutorial just to stay on the basics of the ball bounce um, and in the future if you enjoy this I'll do another tutorial where we get the more advanced lessons so for example, as we said earlier, we could come in and decide actually this isn't going to be a ball. This is going to be um, this is going to be a basketball, which is going to bounce very different to a bowling ball. We could give it a go and bounce it like a bowling ball, and then it's it's not going to have very it will it might it'll probably have hardly any squash and stretch, and it'll probably be very heavy. So we'd have to play around in the graph editor. So we'd go back to our translate y, and we'd minimize. All, all of this and we'd minimize this um, um, so that it didn't have that have, didn't have that bounce um, so that it bounced a lot lot, lot less um, I'm gonna leave that for a different day that's because that's a whole lesson in and of itself thinking about how different things bounce um, and another thing I would like to do in our next lesson we're gonna come in and we're just gonna animate the the rotation of it so we're gonna animate um, this this line in the middle so we're going to rotate it and so we see that line moving as it rotates and that'll be really cool to add some spin to it but we're going to save that for our next lesson I really hope you guys have enjoyed this I really hope you've learned the, the basics through doing this um, and hopefully yours is looking a little bit like this or you might have decided to change it you might have decided to take your own spin on it which is perfectly fine you as the animator have the artistic choice to do that um, 
So yeah, let me know if you'd enjoy this, if you'd like to see more. I currently have a YouTube series all about animation facts, and it's called 100 Facts About Disney. And I go from the very beginning at Snow White, and I'm going to go all the way to present day, showing how animation has changed throughout the years and how it's evolved. And I just really want people to remember uh, the origins and where animation comes from and all the legendary animators at Disney called the Disney's Nine Old Men who created the whole Disney style. Um, so that's my goal with that series. Um, and the goal for me is to become a, an animator working in a studio as well. So come and join me for the journey. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. All the best, guys. Stay safe.